you can believe it, the president who helped make this NFL season what it was has yet to comment on tonight's big Super Bowl game. Apart from dismissing a pregame interview invitation, now a presidential tradition. It's not certain whether his ongoing beef with the league had anything to do with the decision, but it's fitting, really a fitting capstone for a season defined as much by base politics as it was by big plays. Joining me now is Dave Zirin, sports editor for The Nation, who, along with NFL star and activist Michael Bennett, is co-author of the upcoming book, Things That Make White People Uncomfortable. Dave, uh, this has been a year where Colin Kaepernick, Bennett, and others have stood or knelt to raise issues of social justice that many of us respect. And... They have been demonized by the right and denigrated by the president of the United States. Uh, he has dismissed a pregame interview that presidents do. Uh, he has also not made any predictions uh, about the, uh, the Super Bowl. I don't know if this is beef with the NFL, want some personal stuff or what, but I don't think that he can even dampen the impact of what we saw this year in terms right. of athletes standing up and saying that I can't divorce who I am from what I am. Right. I mean, it was a historic year in that regard. But first, to take it a step back, let's be clear. Donald Trump has a beef with the NFL, not because of protesting players and attempting no. to raise awareness about police violence. He has a beef with the NFL because he wanted to own a team and they said that his finances were too shady to be part of their exclusive club. And I think it says so much about politics in this country that many NFL owners have come to the conclusion that Donald Trump is not good enough to be in the NFL, but he is good enough to be president. So they will write checks for him for millions of dollars to run this country, but they don't trust him to run an NFL team. No, that's, that, one that's thing. what I was referring to, because he was certainly rejected uh, by these owners in terms of joining their exclusive club. But let, let me uh, also uh, bring this point home because I think in our interview with Jamel Hill, which I know you saw, uh, she brought up the point that many of us have been raising for a long time is that once you're off the field, or for that matter, if you're entertainer off the stage, you have to deal with the racial reality and right. class reality that anyone else has to deal with. And when I say class, you may be rich, but you don't have the same pedigree, not treated the same way, right. particularly if you're a person of color. No, absolutely. And that's something that Michael Bennett of the Seahawks always says. He says that he believes in the Black Lives Matter movement because uh, he's only going to be a football player for a few more years, but he's going to be black the rest of his life. And we forget also that these players are still connected to the communities from which they're from. And the NFL overwhelmingly draws its talent pool from underserved communities in this country, for communities that think football really is the one way out. People can go to Belle Glade, Florida, which is only about an hour away from Mar-a-Lago, and see a level of black poverty in this country that would have shamed yeah. Bobby Kennedy 50 years ago. You know, that's the reality of this country that we don't see, and that's the pipeline that the NFL depends on, especially in this era of heightened awareness of concussions when more and more middle-class families are keeping their kids away from the sport. But I got to make one comment about something Jamel said. I mean, she made the terrific point about Donald Trump hijacking this movement and making it about patriotism and not about what it's supposed right. to be about, which is raising awareness about racial inequity and police violence. One point to be very hopeful about in 2017 slash 2018 is that a poll was taken by HuffPost YouGov that showed that after Trump's comments, more white Americans could tell you that these protests were about police violence than before Trump's comments. And that is 100% a tribute to the NFL players who stayed on message in November and December no, they when they would very, be on shows very, like this. Very disciplined in that. Yes. I also want to raise another point that Jamel and I talked about, which many of us in civil rights organizations have been raising a long time. 70% of the players are black. How many black owners of an NFL team, Dave Zyron? 
Zero. So um, we can entertain, yeah. but we can't own even 50 years after Dr. King's assassination. Well, that's one another thing that, that Michael Bennett says in, the, in this book we're doing. He said to me that we have to get across the notion so people understand that the NFL is not integrated. That integration is a myth because while the players are, of course, integrated, power is not integrated. Right. And because the average career is just three and a half years, you know, players come and go. That's why they say NFL stands for not for long. Uh, but when you're in that ownership box, you are perpetual. You and are people, Jerry Jones. And people need to know that when they sit in a room and decide the fate of a Colin Kaepernick or Michael Bennett, it's an exclusive white room, white yes. room of owners. Thank you, Dave Zirin. Up next, my final thoughts.